So I've been using a NAS for the last six months, and as someone who is a total beginner in this field of tech, I thought it'd be fun to share what my real world experience has been like for anyone who is in my shoes. I'll be talking about what a NAS is and why I wanted one, my setup experience, how I use it daily, its reliability over time, and the biggest lessons and mistakes I've learned from my entire experience so far. So let's first start by laying the foundation and explaining what a NAS is and why I decided to get one. NAS stands for Network Attached Storage, and in simple terms, it's a large box filled with external hard drives that store all of your data and can be accessed remotely over the internet, whether you're at home or anywhere around the world. You can customize the setup by adding different sized hard drives to create your own storage system, essentially. Think of it like cloud storage, but one that you own and keep in your house instead of paying for a subscription service like Google Drive every month. And to be clear, this isn't a knock at cloud solutions, I still use them and will talk more about that later in the video. Okay, so why did I get a NAS? As a content creator, I have terabytes upon terabytes of footage and projects, and I didn't have a great solution for everything. I was using massive external hard drives I had to plug in and unplug as I needed to, and while that worked for a while, it was inconvenient since I could only access them when I was at home. Plus, I've had external hard drives fail on me before in the past, which has led to me losing like really important data, which still bothers me to this day. On top of all that, they're not expandable at all. I was stuck with the storage that I bought initially with no room to grow as my needs changed. The NAS I've been using for the past six months is the Synology DS1522+, Plus, which supports up to five hard drive bays. Full disclosure, Synology sent this to me, but this is not a sponsored video. I actually reached out to them to try it out and share my beginner experience as a fun little passion project video for YouTube. And they were cool with that, and they're watching this at the same time as all of you guys watching at home. Okay, so let's talk about my setup experience. Earlier this year, I received a ton of boxes from Synology to get everything set up, and honestly, the excitement was real. Oh, I'm so excited. There it is. Oh man. This is it. Unboxing everything felt like setting up one of the coolest systems for myself and my business. Setting up the NAS with these hard drives was surprisingly easy and satisfying. They just slotted right in each time. I followed all of the instructions and the process was generally pretty smooth. Along with the hard drive installation, I installed two Synology Enterprise M.2 NVMe SSDs, which I later configured as SSD cache for the NAS. If you're not familiar with SSD cache, let me break it down in layman terms and, and make it super easy to understand. Think of it like a super fast middleman between the NAS and your files. Instead of the NAS having to access the slower hard drives every time to open or edit something, it stores frequently used or recently accessed files on these SSDs. And since SSDs are much faster than traditional hard drives, this makes things like loading or saving files much quicker, especially with large project files or big folders. So essentially, my NAS feels faster in daily use because it's not relying just on the slower hard drives for everything. Okay, so once I had all the hardware in place, I watched I watched SpaceRex, which is a YouTuber online, their tutorial on setting up a NAS for the first time, which I highly recommend. His content is super detailed and easy to follow, making the rest of the configuration process really straightforward for me. Okay, so one of the most important decisions you make during the setup of a NAS is choosing the right RAID array configuration. In simple terms, think of a RAID as a way to help protect your data by spreading it across multiple hard drives. So if one drive fails, you don't lose everything. This is especially important if you're storing storing irreplaceable files like videos, photos, or work projects. So choosing the right RAID setup ensures a balance between storage, space, and redundancy to make sure that your files are safe while still maximizing usable capacity. Okay, so <laughs> that was a mouthful. So for example, RAID 0 seemed tempting to me because it would give me full capacity of my three times 12 terabyte hard drives that I had for my NAS, but the downside is that there's no data protection in this RAID array. If one of these drives fail, I'd lose 
everything, which just wasn't an option for me. It kind of would defeat the purpose of this, this system to begin with. I also considered something called RAID 5, which offers redundancy by using one of the drives for data protection. So with my three by 12 terabyte hard drives, RAID 5 would give me around 24 terabytes of usable space and keep the extra 12 terabyte drive for redundancy. But RAID 5 has a little bit of a limitation for me personally. You need drives of the same size and upgrading storage later can can become a little bit tricky. So that's why I went with something called SHR-1, which stands for Synology Hybrid RAID 1. Like RAID 5, SHR-1 also uses one drive for redundancy, so I have around 24 terabytes of usable storage and approximately 12 terabytes for protection. But the big advantage is that SHR-1 is much more flexible. If I want to add another drive later, even if it's just a different size, I can do that easily without worrying about matching all of the drives that I had in the past. For someone like me that is new to this whole data system process, SHR-1 gives me the perfect balance of data protection, flexibility, and ease of use as I dive into the world of NASes here. Okay, so now let's discuss how the NAS fits into my daily workflow and some of the real world benefits I've experienced so far after the last six months. To start, whenever I finish a project on my computer, I transfer the entire video folder using Offshoot to my NAS. And to do this, I use a 10 gigabit ethernet to Thunderbolt adapter from OWC that connects directly to my MacBook Pro. Since MacBooks don't actually come with 10 gigabit ethernet, I needed a solution to bridge the 10 gigabit ethernet connection from the NAS to my Mac, and this adapter has been perfect for my setup. Alternatively, you could use a 10 gigabit network switch, but for my needs, the adapter has been more than sufficient and simpler to implement in my opinion. Once my files are transferred, I have my NAS automatically back up any new data to the cloud overnight. This gives me extra redundancy and peace of mind, knowing that if anything happens to my NAS, my files are still safe. I use back Blaze B2 for cloud backups because it offers the perfect balance of cost and speed for my needs personally, but there are plenty of options out there like Google Drive or Synology Zone C2. But when it comes to backups, I'm still personally working toward the golden 3-2-1 backup rule, where you keep three copies of your data, two stored locally on different devices, ideally in separate locations, and one in the cloud. Ideally, to achieve the 3 to one backup rule, I would need to have a second NAS in another location to back up my primary NAS to, and that's honestly something I hope to implement in the future to just perfect my whole system. Another major benefit is how easy it is to access and reuse files stored on my NAS in future video projects. I can connect directly to the NAS from my Finder and my Mac, or I can also log on through the web browser and access Synology's intuitive operating system. This makes it easy to reference my entire catalog of work over the years, whether I'm at home or anywhere else around the world. This level of accessibility simply just wasn't possible when I was using a bunch of random external hard drives. Now, keep in mind that a NAS can do much more than just store project files. It's practically a computer in itself with a wide range of apps that you can install and you can kind of tinker with it to make it do what you want it to do. For example, I know a lot of people use their NAS as a media server to store and stream movies and TV shows locally at their house or to keep all of their security camera footage organized and accessible. I I'm really just scratching the surface surface here, and there's a lot more potential depending on how I want to use it and evolve my NAS setup over the years. In terms of reliability after six months, I'm happy to report that I haven't experienced any issues with my setup, no hard drive failures, no crashes, and no downtime with the NAS, even with several power outages that have happened to me over the year. It's been running smoothly the entire time, which has been a huge relief, honestly. One concern I did have going into this was how loud the NAS might be, especially since I keep mine on my desk where I work, which is actually just right behind me. But honestly, it's been impressively quiet. I rarely even notice it's running, and if you're thinking about keeping yours in your workspace, you'll probably find it quiet enough for day-to-day -day use as well. To be clear, it's not like, like silent, like you hear stuff, but I personally don't find the, the noise of it annoying when it is actually operating and doing stuff in the background. In terms of temperature, the NAS stays relatively cool, even under heavier use. I've never noticed it getting overly hot, which was another concern I had when I set it up, especially putting it on my desk. As for performance, I'm getting the transfer speeds as advertised, which has made my workflow much smoother. Right now, I'm only using three of the five available bays, and while it's already fast, I know that once I fill all five of the drive bays, I 
should see even better performance since the drives will actually work together more efficiently. Okay, so now let's talk about one of the biggest lessons I've learned from this entire experience, which is if I could go back, I'd actually choose SHR2 instead of SHR1 when it came to setting up my NAS RAID array. While SHR1 has served me well, and I've explained how it offers that single drive redundancy, which I you know, alluded to earlier in the video, meaning one drive can fail and my data would still be safe temporarily, I've come to realize that with the amount of important data I store, I'd feel much more safe with a two drive redundancy array, which SHR2 offers. And to further explain why this is actually safer, I'm gonna dive into the process of, of what happens when a drive fails. So with SHR1, if a if a single hard drive fails, I have a backup, which is great. Like we've, we've talked about that. But the issue comes when I have to replace that failed drive and rebuild the array. During that process, if another drive fails during that rebuild process, I would actually lose everything. And given how much critical data I've accumulated in videos, personal files, just, just so much data, it's just a risk I'm not comfortable taking anymore. With SHR2, even with one drive fails and I'm in the process of rebuilding, I'd still have a second backup drive for extra protection. It's simply a level of peace of mind that I think is worth the extra storage trade-off, especially when you're dealing with irreplaceable data. Another lesson I've learned is that I wish I had gone with 16 terabytes or even 20 terabyte hard drives instead of the 12 terabyte ones that I initially chose. When I first set up the NAS, I thought 12 terabytes would give me plenty of breathing room to build upon over time, but I didn't realize just how quickly I'd be filling up with all my projects and videos and footage I've been putting onto here. At the rate that I'm going, I've probably got around two years max before I hit full capacity, and at that point, I'll need to look into upgrading my entire storage setup all over again. Overall though, after six months of using a NAS, I can confidently say it's been a game changer for my workflow. From seamless file access to reliable backups, it's solved so many problems for me as a business owner and as a creator, especially because I've been just relying on traditional hard drives for so long. If you are a content creator or if you're just someone that manages a lot of data like I do, I would highly recommend you looking into getting a NAS of any kind, doesn't need to be from Synology, you can get it from QNAP, you can build your own, there's so many options out there, but definitely look into it. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Let's start a community down there and help each other figure out how to navigate this sometimes complicated space of NASes and data storage. Anyways, thank you for watching. Comment hashtag I made it if you finished the video. Subscribe if you're brand new to my channel and I'll talk to all of you guys in the next one. Peace.